When learning algebra, it is easy to feel inundated with various algebraic equations and rules. The belief that you have to memorize all of these formulas can make the discipline seem overwhelming. And even if you have a good memory, sometimes those identities and formulas just zip in and out of reach. But it turns out that the area model introduced for learning multiplication can be extended to the algebraic world if we first consider only positive quantities and let the rules extend to negative quantities as well. The major key result that leads to most of the other algebraic identities is the distributive property of multiplication over addition. This major idea has a nice visualization in terms of decomposing a rectangle. In the example here, we imagine we have a 5 by 9 rectangle, but we think of 9 as 3 plus 6, so we have a 5 by 3 plus 6 rectangle. Then the area of this rectangle is the product of 5 and 9, or the product of 5 and the quantity 3 plus 6. On the other hand, we can think of the rectangle as two rectangles shoved together. One is a 5 by 3 rectangle, and the other is a 5 by 6 rectangle. The areas of these two rectangles are 5 times 3 and 5 times 6, respectively. And so the area of the large rectangle is the sum of these two sub-rectangle areas. Because we just computed the area of the original rectangle in two ways, we see that 5 times the quantity 3 plus 6 is equal to 5 times 3 plus 5 times 6. Seeing the one example is nice, but notice there is nothing special about the numbers 5, 3, and 6. Here we do the same thing but use the numbers 8, 4, and 11 to get that 8 times the quantity 4 plus 11 is equal to 8 times 4 plus 8 times 11. Note that the side lengths don't have to be to scale in this pictorial representation. So we notice that the arithmetic idea can be extended to an algebraic one by using an A by B plus C rectangle, where A, B, and C are meant to represent numbers. Once again, we can compute the area of this rectangle in two ways. The first yields an area of A times the quantity B plus C. If we instead decompose into A by B and A by C rectangles, then the area is A times B plus A times C. Therefore, we get the general rule that A times the quantity B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. This is the distributive property, and many of the algebraic rules we learn come from using this over and over in various ways. For example, one of the classic ways to extend the distributive law is to compute the square of a sum. Here we're interested in the area of a square with side length a plus b. On the one hand, we get a plus b squared. On the other hand, we can decompose the sides into lengths of a and b, and then we split the square into two smaller squares and two congruent rectangles. The first square is a by a and has an area a squared. The rectangles are both a by b rectangles, so together they enclose an area of 2 times a times b, and the second square is b by b, so it encloses an area of b squared. From this we see that the quantity a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This square example is actually part of a larger phenomenon where we use the distributive property on a rectangle where both sides are decomposed into two smaller lengths. Here we have an a plus b by c plus d rectangle whose area is given by the product of these numbers a plus b times c plus d. But if we instead break up the side lengths to a, b, c, and d, then the rectangle decomposes into four sub-rectangles. These rectangles have areas a times c, a times d, b times c, and b times d. Therefore, we get the fact that a plus b times c plus d is equal to ac plus bc plus ad plus bd. You can get here strictly algebraically by applying the distributive property three times, but the picture makes it clear what is going on with this process that is sometimes called FOIL, a mnemonic device to help students remember the process that is clearly pictured here geometrically. We can even extend the distributive property to higher dimensions. For example, suppose we have a cube with side length a plus b, then one way to compute the volume of the cube is a plus b cubed. On the other hand, we can decompose the sides into lengths of a and b, and then the cube is decomposed into eight pieces. There are two smaller cubes and six rectangular prisms, three each of two separate types. So another way to compute the volume is to use these shapes. We get an a by a by a cube with volume a cubed, a b by b by b cube with volume b cubed, three a by a by b cuboids with a volume of three a squared b, and three b by b by a cuboids with a volume three a b squared. From this image, we get the identity a plus b cubed is equal to a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Once you've grasped how to visualize the distributive property, you can begin to add other ideas to your visual algebra repertoire.
such as cutting and moving areas around. To illustrate this, we see that the quantity x squared plus dx can be represented with an x by x square on top of a d by x rectangle. Then we can take the d by x rectangle and cut it in half to produce 2d over 2 by x rectangles, which we can then place on adjacent sides of the x by x square. The resulting shape is nearly a square with side length x plus d over 2. The missing bit is actually a d over 2 by d over 2 square, so we conclude from this that x squared plus dx equals the quantity x plus d over 2 squared minus d over 2 squared. This process is known as completing the square, and we can do even more with it. We can solve the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 for the unknown x in terms of a, b, and c. To do this, we first divide everything by a, and then we note that we have x squared plus dx, where d equals b over a. So d over 2 equals b over 2a. But then applying our picture and the original identity, we get that x squared plus b over ax plus c over a is equal to the quantity x plus b over 2a squared minus b over 2a squared plus c over a. This means that the quantity x plus b over 2a squared is equal to b over 2a squared minus c over a, so that x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b over 2a squared minus c over a. From this, we get that x is negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b over 2a squared minus c over a. This is one version of the quadratic formula derived using the area model and the idea of completing the square. Can you see how to manipulate this to get the more traditional form of this formula? The cutting and moving of regions works in higher dimensions too. We can start with an a by a by a cube with volume a cubed and remove an upper b by b by b cube to produce a solid with a volume a cubed minus b cubed. But then this solid can be decomposed into three solids, each with one dimension of a minus b. Then if we move them and stack them together so that they are all a minus b deep, we can compute the volume of the solid as a minus b times the area of the top, which consists of a b by b square, an a by b rectangle, and an a by a square. So the top area is a squared plus a b plus b squared. From this, we see that a cubed minus b cubed is the quantity a minus b times the quantity a squared plus a b plus b squared. Why stop there? We can do something similar with the quantity a cubed plus b cubed, which is represented by an a by a by a cube and a b by b by b cube next to each other like this. We can enclose these two cubes in a larger cube with side length of a plus b. If we temporarily fill in the front a by b by a plus b cuboid, we add a volume of a plus b times a times b. But now we can decompose this shape into two separate rectangular prisms, and they each have one dimension of a plus b. So the volume enclosed here is a plus b times the top area, which consists of an a by a square and a b by b square. So the volume is a plus b times a squared plus b squared. If we subtract both sides by a plus b times a times b, and then use the distributive property to factor out the quantity a plus b, we see that a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b times the quantity a squared plus b squared minus a times b. There's no reason to cut shapes in rectangular pieces only either. In this visual, we start with a square of side length y, enclosing an area of y squared, and then we remove a square in the lower left corner with a side length z. The resulting shape has an area of y squared minus z squared. Then we can cut this region along the diagonal, connecting the upper right square corners, and then rotate and flip the bottom piece so that the two pieces fit together along their diagonal. The resulting shape is a rectangle with dimensions y minus z and y plus z. So we conclude that y squared minus z squared is equal to y plus z times y minus z. This is known as the difference of squares formula, and it literally arises from removing one geometric square from another. Another one of my favorite examples of using shapes to derive algebraic identities and further results comes from looking at an a by b rectangle with area a times b. If we grab four copies of this rectangle and rotate two of them, we can create a square with side length a plus b that has a missing inner square. 
Because the inner square has a side length given by the difference of the rectangle side lengths, the inner square has a side length of b minus a. And so we conclude that the a plus b by a plus b square can be decomposed into four rectangles and the inner square, resulting in the identity a plus b squared minus the quantity b minus a squared is equal to four times a times b. An interesting consequence of this algebraic identity is the two-term arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality. Because b minus a squared is non-negative, we see that the quantity a plus b squared is greater than or equal to four times a times b, so that a plus b divided by two is greater than or equal to the square root of a times b. The picture also shows us that we get equality if and only if the inner square is missing, that is when a is equal to b. Another example along these lines is to start with an a plus b by a plus b square enclosing an area of a plus b squared along with an a minus b by a minus b squared enclosing an area of a minus b squared. Now we can break the first square into six regions, an a by a square, two b by a minus b rectangles, and three b by b squares. Then we can rearrange these regions as shown to see the same area can be represented by two copies of an a by a square and two copies of a b by b square. Thus, a plus b squared plus a minus b squared is equal to two times the quantity a squared plus b squared. And once again, because a minus b squared is non-negative, we see that a plus b over two is less than or equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared divided by two. This is known as the two-term arithmetic mean root mean square inequality. And again, we have equality precisely when a and b are equal. Now that we have seen lots of examples of algebraic identities visually, we can finish with a much more complicated one that invokes many of the ideas we have seen in this video, along with one extra, reshaping certain regions to ones with equal areas. To begin with, we start with a square of side length given by x squared plus y squared plus the quantity x plus y squared. This large square has an area of x squared plus y squared plus the quantity x plus y squared, all squared. But now we can decompose the left side length into lengths of x squared, y squared, and x plus y squared. For the bottom length, we decompose into x squared, y squared, x squared, 2xy, and y squared. Here we've used our previous identity for x plus y squared. This process cuts the large square into 15 subregions, but we will group three together for a total of 13 regions. First, we have an x plus y squared by x squared rectangle, an x plus y squared by y squared rectangle, and an x plus y squared by x plus y squared square. Next, we have two squares with side length y squared, two squares with side length x squared, a y squared by 2xy rectangle, an x squared by 2xy rectangle, and four rectangles with dimensions x squared by y squared. We split off the square with side length x plus y squared, which has an area x plus y to the fourth. The two squares with side length x squared, each enclosing an area of x to the fourth, and the two squares with side length y squared, each enclosing an area of y to the fourth. Then the rectangles with side length x plus y squared form posts for a square connected by the rectangles with side length 2xy. The resulting square is missing a central region, which is a square with side length 2xy. Luckily, the four remaining rectangles have an area of 4 times x squared times y squared when put together in a rectangle. This rectangle can thus be reshaped into a 2xy by 2xy square since that encloses the same area. We can use the resulting small square to fill in the missing piece, thus yielding another full square with side length x plus y squared. As we have used up all the regions from our original large square, we conclude that the enclosed area, x squared plus y squared plus x plus y squared, all squared, must be equal to two times the quantity x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus the quantity x plus y to the fourth. This beautiful identity is known as Candido's identity, and this identity shows us that we can use our visual area model for algebraic identities to build up even some of the most complicated identities. Now it's your turn. Do you have an interesting algebraic identity that you like? If so, can you figure out how to represent it visually? Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned a little bit about representing algebraic identities visually. While I don't recommend creating the images each time you need them to do some algebra, I do find that keeping rough ideas of these pictures in my head helps me remember what the identities should be when I need them. Maybe they can help you too? 
This video contains many famous visual proofs that are attributed to various authors. Please check the description for links to the original diagrams and author attribution. I also have links included for many of these identities as standalone videos. Let me know in the comments which identity and diagram is your favorite.